Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now, our guest in the studio is a very interesting woman. She's a managing director and the chief executive officer of Raytrack Limited. And she established this company 11 years ago at the age of 25 and with no prior working experience ever. She's the only female car tracker in Nigeria. And she says she's the youngest as well to do that. Yesterday, she won the Eloy 2018 category for a woman that inspires. And today, she's gracing the set of Hello Nigeria. Nigeria. Please join me as we introduce Eno Essien. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Congratulations on your Exactly. Thank Congratulations. You. How did you feel when they called you? Did you know first that you were going to win? Did you have suspect that you were going to win? No. Um, they contacted me and um, to verify what I do. Apparently, they heard about what, what I do. And I was invited for the awards for the ceremony. And then they tried to confirm that I was coming and that was it. You know, so while I sat there enjoying the event, I then had my citation. You know, I, I heard things about myself. I first had the 25 years, and I'm like, that's me. And then my heart started beating. <laughs> Did you cry? No, I didn't cry. Oh, no. congratulations. Oh, thank you. You're strong like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so th that's just amazing. It goes to show that when you do what you believe in, you keep on pushing and putting your hard work, it'll pay off eventually and the right people will notice you. Now, let's go back to the moment where you decided that you wanted to do car tracking. You did not study this. You didn't study any form of engineering in university. You studied microbiology. microbiology. So at what point did you decide to abandon your degree in microbiology and pursue one in Micro car tracking? I, I actually never wanted to pursue any any um, any career in microbiology. I studied in my initial childhood dream was to become a medical doctor. And I didn't make my jam cut off. So the microbiology was like the alternative while I rewrite jam. So that was it. Well, after school, in the course of um, doing, I was into small business. In the course of doing small business, I met someone who had told me about the GSM car alarm, which was um, like the technology before the car tracking technology, you know. And then I had an incident. I was robbed somewhere. I contacted him to ask about the device. He explained it to me. And he's like, that car that was stolen, because my friend's car was stolen where I was. So he was like, that car that was stolen would have been able to shut it down and recover it. So I basically went into tracking out of curiosity. Oh, nice. Yeah. And for how long have you been doing this? 11 years. Wow. And how has it been for you so far? Um, very fulfilling. I like it because I'm, there's, I identify the problem and I'm trying to solve the problem. You know, so when we have um, cases of theft and we recover the vehicles, very rewarding. When we have um, people trying to look for relatives or trying to keep an eye on their children or anything, you know, and we're able to solve that, very, very rewarding. So out of one, one to ten people, how many people can you say in Nigeria right now who are car owners use the tracking system? I would say... Hmm. Like, is the awareness... Well, there's, the there's, still a well lot of, there's still a lot of work to be done. I would say 55%, you know. A lot of people prefer to cover their cars with the blood, you know, and, <laughs> and um, downplay the, the issue of tracking. Sometimes an experience then leads them to contacting us about the tracker. I think so. it's also the same thing with insurance as well. People yes, don't see people the importance don't of insurance, insurance until you you've had an accident. Happens, yeah. you, know, you don't have to learn the hard way. You buy a new car for yourself and then you realize, okay, I should I have done a comprehensive insurance, insurance yeah. for my car. Mm -hmm. Now, um, let's talk about the fact that you're, the, you're a female in a seemingly male-dominated industry. Does that come with any challenges and does that come with any advantages? If yes, what are they? No challenges. I would say no challenges. For me, no challenges. That's like my um, rule in life. No excuses, you know. So advantages, I don't think there is an advantage or a disadvantage being female. It's just something I do. I absolutely love what I do and I keep doing it. I've been doing it. Okay, so I'm going to ask about the systems itself. Okay. Um, because I've actually had people who say, oh, yeah, I would have loved to get the tracking device, but I feel it will be very expensive. Is that true? No. Reason being, anyone who can afford a car can afford a tracker. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, wow. so now let, let's look at car theft in Nigeria. How often, what are the statistics? We don't know because we are not thieves and we probably don't know as many, we don't have as many friends who have had their car stolen over and again. Well, how, how regular is 
car theft in Nigeria, you know, and, okay, maybe we should start with that. How regular is car theft in Nigeria? I would say, um, I'll start with the good part of it, that vehicle theft is declining. We don't have as much cases of vehicle theft as we did even a year ago. So it's declining, which is good. Okay. So now, for, for people who have vehicles and are trying to protect their vehicles, beyond having a car tracker, what are some security tips that people should be aware of, car owners should be aware of? Where you park, sometimes people just go and park um, without looking at the environment to be sure that it is safe. You know, where you park, you need to be observant of the environment. When you park your car, you need to lock the steering of your car. Oh, brilliant. And then when you have the tracker, I mean, the tracker basically gives you peace of mind because you know wherever your car is, if it's stolen, you would always recover it. Okay. How are you as a boss in your workplace? Maybe, you know, I wanted to ask you what your staff strength is like, but... Maybe I wouldn't go into that, but how is it being the boss? You've been the boss for 11 years. How are, what are some of the lessons you've learned as an employer of labor in the past 11 years? Prior to starting Raytrack, I had never worked. So I don't have the work experience. I, don't, I, I didn't know what um, the work life was like. I never had that experience. How have I been as the boss? I think... Um, the staff will be in a better position <laughs> to answer I that. I quite agree. But um, I try to, I've, I have long-standing staff, meaning that they've been with me for many years. So I believe that um, if they weren't okay, they won't still be there. And I say to them, if you're not happy, if you wake up in the morning and you're not happy to go to work, then you shouldn't be doing the job. So they come to work, everyone is happy. They were expecting me there today after the Eloy Awards and I couldn't make it, so I called in to cancel, and they were like, no, 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 you have to be here by 8 tomorrow. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, we, I have a very good um, working relationship with everybody. So you, you still have the lessons you've learned in the course of being a boss? Um, the lessons I've learned in the course of being a boss, to listen more, you know, I, I don't just dish out instructions. I try to listen, you know. Um, that would be one. To, to, to get along better with them. I mean, I'm, I'm, I relate better with them now than I did, say, even two years ago. And I'm still learning. I'm still learning. All right. Okay. So, I'm um, sorry, I want to get a bit personal with you. Okay. I wasn't been having a job that has, or running a company that has branches, because I know you have one in Akwaibo. Yes, in Abuja, I know you have one in, in Abuja. Court. Yeah. I schooled in Unica, so I knew oh, of your, really? <laughs> yeah, your branch in Akwaibo. Okay. Yeah, so the thing is, have you been able to manage that with the stereotype of career women? If you understand what I mean, concerning marriage, relationship, you work with multinationals, you're doing well. So how does that affect your working relationship? With or does you? that threaten people? Maybe she's asking, does yeah. that threaten people? Does, that does threaten what threaten people? people? Your success, maybe. Your success, success who now? Maybe um, potential partners. Partners, business partners. No. Oh, oh, all right. I don't know. Anybody who <laughs> <laughs> have a question, do? Um, well, I don't know. Anyone who is threatened would not know. It doesn't even bother. I don't think about I that. I think the person that will be threatened by your career is someone that should not be with you in the first place. Exactly. Anyway. Thank you so much for joining you for us. Coming. It's been such a delight having you. Thank you. For now that you've won here. the Eloy Awards for the Woman Who Inspire, what does that mean to you? Well, it does mean a lot. You see, um, consistency is harder when no one is clapping. I've done this for 11 years. There's um, a lot of female bodies that give awards, and this is the first female body that is recognizing me. So it does mean a lot to me. I'm glad that um, I'm working and somebody is looking out. You never really know who's looking at you. I always even say that um, you inspire even people who pretend not to see you. You know how it is. You're doing something, nobody commends you, but you're actually inspiring some of those people. You know, so it's, um, I'm encouraged to do more, to keep doing my thing, to keep sharing my story, you know, and letting my story inspire people. Because for me, there are no excuses. You, you find people who say, oh, I can't do this because I'm tall, or I can't do this because I'm short, or I'm ill, I can't do this. For me, it's no excuses. Um, let me give an example. I remember some years ago, I was, I was ill, and um, I had to travel to the UK. 
while I was there, I used to have um, a 22-inch desktop on my table that I used to work with because I knew I was going to be away for a long time. I traveled to the UK with that computer. I put it in my box, padded it with pillows, and I traveled with it. While I was ill, I was still working. The days I'm weak, you know, I take a break. But the moment I gather some strength, I'm working. So for me, no excuses. So when people say I'm not feeling well, I can't go to work. No, it doesn't make any sense to me. If you tell me I'm tired and I want to rest, oh, that's fine. You know, so for me, no excuses. That's... Mm. So even when they are so sick and they're in the hospital, that's not a good enough excuse? Well, I don't think so because I've had the experience. Even while I was down, I was working. Wow. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. How Thank can people you follow you on having... social media? Um, on my Instagram handle, Miss Essien, M-S, the Miss is M-S. E double S I E N. All right. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you for having We've me. We've been speaking with NOSCN, the founder, CEO of Raytrack, and she shared with us her journey from where she started to where she is today. And we hope that her having won the Eloy category for Women That Inspires will also inspire you to know that regardless of how long you've been doing what you're doing, there is that consistency will pay off eventually. If you will not stop, if you will not be discouraged. So shout out to Eloy Award and thank you for recognizing women for the work that they do. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.